Good morning, Victory Outreach Cape Town. This is Pastor Chuck and Sister Chica, and we just want to let you know that we're praying for you and that we love each and every one of you very much. We know that the times that we're living in right now are pretty intense. There's a lot that's going on in our world today, especially with us here in South Africa, being that we just got into this lockdown. But we also know that no matter what we're going through, the God that we serve is greater than anything. And uh, we're so excited this morning that although we may not physically be able to be together, but we're able to still have church together. And we know that God is going to do something very special this morning right there in your living room. I also know that you haven't been able to see Sister Chica for a while, so it's good to have her on the set here this morning, and she's going to be able to say hi. Chica, why don't you say hi to the people? Hi, church. I just want to say that I love you and I miss you very, very much. But for sure that I pray for you and your family every day each one of you i really so much miss you so much but remember one thing during this lockdown god really ministered to me that this is a great opportunity for us not to miss him we need to really really find the heart of god build a deep relationship with our god our husband our wife our children and together we will strong as a family victory out is kept town we have god on our side Amen. So again, we have a power pack service that we put together for you. We know that God's going to move in a special way this morning. I'm going to say a word of prayer, and then we're going to go into a time of praise and worship. And also at the end of everything, we're going to give you an opportunity to continue to partner with us in your giving. And so we love you. Be, get your heart ready and get ready for God to do something very special. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your faithfulness to our lives. And God, we know that no matter what's taking place in this world today, you are in control. And Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you would use this time to minister to each and every one of us in a special way. We love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody together said, Amen. Amen.
what a time of worship. We know that you can feel the presence of God right there in your living room. And now, not only do we want to praise God and worship Him, but we also want to hear from Him here this morning. So I want to encourage you to get rid of all distractions, focus, lock in, and let's let God speak to us in a special way this morning. We need a word from God. Put your attention. I hope that you enjoy this message. Pastor Andre is going to bless us this morning. Good morning, Victory Aries family. With everything taking place, we know all the things that's happening and the crisis that the world finds itself in, but you're still tuning in and you find yourself in the house of the Lord this morning. We are going to turn your living room or your bedroom, wherever you're watching, we're going to turn that into a sanctuary this morning. And I want to encourage you to get your entire household, get your family, get your friends, get your loved ones, get your son, get your daughter, your mom, your dad, your auntie, get everybody in the house. And tell them to gather around with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Now, I want to encourage you to get your Bibles, also your notepad. I want to take some notes. If you take it on your iPad or your phone, however you do it, that's cool. But get a pen, and let's celebrate Jesus together this morning. And also, we want to welcome all of our online guests. And we want to encourage you to be sure to follow us on social media, okay? We have different social media platforms. We want to encourage you to follow us and also share the links. Okay. This morning, I want to speak a message entitled, Salt of the Earth. In Afrikaans, on se, salt van die aard. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden underfoot of men. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. I pray you would help me, God, to communicate your heart this morning. Let me decrease so you may increase. Lat ek fermender so that I can fermender. Help me to communicate your heart this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This morning, I want to speak a message that I believe the Lord has placed upon my heart, and I believe it's perfect for the times that we are living in. Now, Jesus told his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. And then he went on to say, you are the light of the world. Now, how many know in the times that we are living in now, the world is looking for light, and they're looking for hope. Can I hear an amen? If you're watching me right there, just give me a good amen. Amen. So this morning, I want to hit on a few ways that you and I could be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. But before I get into that, I, I, I looked it up in my Afrikaans Bible. I looked up the scripture. Let, matter of fact, let me read it to you. Let me go to my Afrikaans Bible really quick. It says this in, in Matthias, I believe it is, Matthias. Chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Yella is the salt van die ard. Now, for those of you that don't know and those that do know, I'm actually taking some Afrikaans classes on Thursdays, and I'm learning to speak Afrikaans. And my Afrikaans teacher showed me something. She says, look, when you say you in English, it could be you as one person or it could be you as far as everybody, but it's still spelled Y-O-U. So if I say, for example, are you ready to praise the Lord? I could be talking to one person. Or I could say, are you ready to praise the Lord? And I could be talking to a group of people. Mar in Afrikaans, it's a little different. If you say, yay, then you mean one person. But if you say, yalla, then you mean everyone. And what stood out to me is in the Afrikaans Bible, Jesus says, Yella is the salt van die Arda. So what does that mean? He wasn't just talking to one disciple. He was talking to all the disciples. And I know a lot of times as Christians, we think it's up to the preacher to be the salt of the earth or my leader to be the salt of the earth. No, we are all called to be the salt of the earth. So I want to hit on a few ways that you and I could be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So let's talk about salt. Number one, salt was a preservative. Salt was very valuable within the Roman Empire. It could be used to preserve food, which was very important for an empire that was very large. Before the days of 
artificial refrigeration, the main method for preserving food was to treat it with salt. In this way, salt came to represent power. Without it, armies couldn't travel great distances and explorers couldn't sell new lands because their provisions would spoil. So salt was very useful. Matter of fact, in the Bible days, they didn't have refrigerators like you and I have today. So salt was used as a preservative for meats and different things. When meat is butchered, it will soon begin to petrify or rot because of the surface bacteria. But what salt does is it kills the bacteria and prevents a rapid putrefying or rapid decaying. So when Jesus referred to the disciples as being salt of the earth, he was probably thinking about a great opportunity that they had to be a blessing to a world that was decaying and rotting. When you look at our world today, it is the same thing. You and I have an opportunity to be the salt of the earth. In a world that is hurting and decaying, you and I have the opportunity to be a preservative. That's right. A world that is rotting, a world that is looking for hope and looking for answers, you and I have an opportunity to be the salt of the earth. A world that is decaying. You know the crisis that the world is in right now. They're all, we're all looking for answers, but we know that Jesus is the answer. And we have an opportunity to be the salt of the earth. Being the salt of the earth is an opportunity for you and I to be living testimonies of the life-changing power of Jesus Christ in a world that is looking for answers. We can go to a world <clears throat> that is full of decay and bring the good news. The good news is what? Jesus Christ is able to change their life. We can say he did it for me, and he can surely do it for you. There's an answer to your situation. What an opportunity that you and I have today to be the salt of the earth. There are many places and opportunities that you and I could be the salt of the earth and be used as a preservative. At our jobs, at our schools, in our family gatherings, at the shopping mall. Hello. Come on, somebody. In this crisis the world is facing today, you and I could be a preservative to a hurting world. When everything else around us is decaying, we stand in the gap for our world. We stand in the gap for our family. We stand in the gap for our loved ones, lifting them up to the Lord. Where there is rejection, we can bring acceptance. Where there is strife, we can bring unity. Where there is uncertainty, we can bring the gospel. So the first thing that stood out to me about salt is you and I could be a preservative. Number two, the second use of salt was for flavoring. Can you say flavor? Okay, come on. Let's change it up a little bit. Can you say flavor? No, no, not flavor. Flavor. There you go. That's it. You got it. You and I could be flavor. Salt is also a prize, or salt is also prized as a means of flavoring food, right? Although, undoubtedly, it was its preservation qualities which were the most important, flavoring food is also a quality of salt. Let me ask you this. Have you ever eaten food without salt? Not nice, nah? How about this? Have you ever tried hot chips without salt? Maybe some hot chips from Nando's. Come back, church. Come back, come back. Huh? Maybe some hot chips from Nando's with no salt. It's not nice, no? They taste completely different, and they don't have the same Flavor. Somebody say flavor. See, salt brings flavor. I want you to do me a favor. If you're there with your family, just ask your neighbor, do you got flavor? <laughs> in the world we live in today, there are many people who feel like their lives need a little bit of flavor. They're without purpose, and they seem to have nothing to live for. On the outside, everything is together, but on the inside, their lives are flavorless. They're searching here. They're searching there. They're searching all over, looking for answers. On the outside, it seems like everything is good, but on the inside, they feel like their life is flavorless. See, that is where you and I, listen to me, church. Listen to me. That is where you and I could model that Jesus can add some flavor to your life. Mm, mm, mm. 
Come on, somebody. That is where you and I can model that Jesus can add some flavor to your life. The flavor of joy, the flavor of peace, the flavor of love, the flavor of purpose, the flavor of destiny. Once again, we can bring flavor. Somebody say flavor. We can bring this flavor where we go. We can bring it to our jobs. Hello. We can bring it to our schools. We can bring it to the shopping mall. Wherever we go, it can be maybe at our jobs. People are stressed out. People are concerned about the crisis that we're living in today. They don't know if they're going to have a job tomorrow. They don't know if they're going to get laid off. People are wondering. People are stressing out in this time. But you and I could add flavor to the situation. They're not sure about their future. They're feeling hopeless. They don't know if they're going to get laid off. Everything that's taking place, they don't know. There are people losing their jobs and the economy is in a crisis. But it's times like this, church, that you and I can add a little flavor to the situation with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can tell them our God is Jehovah Jireh and he will meet your every need. Our God is on the throne, and there is nothing too difficult for him. You can tell them our God owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and if you give your life to him, he can meet your every need. We can bring flavor to our homes. Not only can we bring flavor to our jobs, we can bring flavor to our homes. Maybe some of your family is not saved, and, and they're shaken up by everything that has taken place. But you can bring joy. You can bring the joy of the Lord and bring some seasoning to that house. That's right. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're living with unsaved family members. Maybe you're living with unsaved loved ones. You could walk around singing, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I'm not really a singer, but you could sing it if you're there in your house. Oh, I've got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. So you're walking around singing, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. When everybody around you, maybe at your job, at your house, they don't know what's going to take a place, but you walk in as some salt and you bring a little flavor to the situation. Come on and give the Lord a good praise right there. Come on, give him a good praise. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hallelujah. We can bring some flavor, don't we? I feel like preaching. Okay, let me, let me behave. Let me behave. Hallelujah. Okay. Maybe some of our family's not saved, and, and like I said, you could bring flavor to the situation. Now, there may be a family member who feels hopeless and don't know what to do, but by them seeing you come to church, or right now you're in your house, but them seeing you serve God, or them seeing you having the joy of the Lord, or, or them seeing you walk around with a skip in your step and a glide in your stride, even in the midst of what's taking place in the world, even in the midst of everything that's happening, the crisis, the chaos, you seem to walk around singing, you're adding flavor to the situation. So don't get discouraged if you're watching right now. God is using you to add flavor to the situation. That mother or that daddy who didn't want to hear about Jesus might be one step away from giving their life to the Lord. That husband, that wife might be one prayer away from walking into the house of the Lord. So don't get discouraged now. That son, that daughter that you've been praying for, they're finding themselves in a time of crisis. They don't know what to do. Continue to let your light shine for the honor and glory of God. Be the salt of the earth. That son, that daughter might be one prayer away from giving their life to the Lord. Why? Because you're adding flavor. They're seeing your testimony. They're seeing your life, and it makes them want to give their life to Jesus. You can even add flavor to your neighborhood. So not only your job, not only your family, you can even add flavor to your neighborhood. Maybe you have old friends or neighbors who don't know what to do in this time of crisis. They feel hopeless and not sure about their future. I mean, you see it on the news. You see people losing their job. You see people, they don't know what to do. But you can add some flavor to the situation. During this time of crisis and uncertainty, now is a good time to invite them to church or to invite them to sit down and watch our church services with you and add some flavor to the situation. Maybe they don't know about Jesus, but them seeing you walk around with the joy of the Lord can add a little flavor to their lives. As the salt of the earth, wherever you and I go, we should bring flavor. Can you say flavor? 
Come on, say it like you mean it. Say flavor. All right. See, our lives should bring flavor to the situation. And let me just throw this in there really quick. Before, this is for free, before we might have brought something else to the situation. <laughs> Hello. Maybe sometimes before we got saved, our family didn't even want us around. Hello. You, maybe you went to a family gathering, but you left with more things than you brought. Oops. When you would show up, they would turn the lights off, close the door, and tell everybody, be still. Come on, somebody. Because they didn't want you to know they were home. But now that you've got, I feel like preaching just a little bit. But now you've got Jesus in your life. Now you've got the Holy Ghost. And you've been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. You walk into the family gathering with a skip in your step, a glide in your stride, and a smile on your face. And not only are you coming and leaving with things, but you're bringing with things. You're bringing joy. You're bringing forgiveness. You're bringing love. I wish I had a little bit of help up in here. Come on, give the Lord a good praise right there in your living room. Hallelujah. So it went from not wanting you around maybe to loving you being around because now you bring flavor. Even at your job, hello, you probably had a bad attitude. Nobody wanted to be around you. But now that you got saved, you got flavor. You got flavor. Do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, Oh, that rhymes, huh? Tell your neighbor, I got flavor. Hey, all right, let's go to point number three. I got to get ready to come in for a landing here. Point number three is another thing about salt is it makes you very thirsty. Somebody say thirsty. One final thing about salt, if you've ever eaten salt, <laughs> it makes you thirsty. Have you noticed how thirsty you get after eating a bag of salted popcorn? You're thirsty, no? Or have you ever noticed when maybe you're flying on a plane and they give you the peanuts, the faithful peanuts on the plane? Those peanuts are very salty, and after you eat them, you get thirsty. <laughs> huh? Okay, how about this one? You ate some hot chips, and you put your little extra salt on there, you got thirsty. It's because salt makes you thirsty. Our lives, check this out before I get ready to come in for a landing. Our lives should be so full of salt that it causes people to thirst for salvation. That's right. When Jesus said you and I are the salt of the earth, our lives should be a testimony that makes people want to give their lives to the Lord. We should make people thirsty. It causes a thirst in their lives to get to know the Jesus that you and I serve. Everybody at your job is maybe concerned and uncertain, but you walk around singing, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Or maybe they knew you before. Can I preach a little bit? Maybe they knew you before you got saved. They knew how you acted, but now you're coming on the scene with joy and, and love, and they're like, there's something different about you. What is it about you? And all you can say, if it wasn't for the Lord, oh, where would I be? But I thank God. God, and you say, Jesus gets all the glory and all the honor. If you're grateful for what God has done in your life, come on and give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Our lives should make people thirsty for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and we know, we all know what's going on. We got the COVID-19 and we know what's happening in the world today. But listen, church, listen to me closely. What an opportunity that you and I have in this day and age to be the salt of of the earth. Listen to me closely. The world is looking for answers. And I, I like something that I heard Pastor Chuck say. He says, when the heart is shaken, the heart is open. And right now, the world is, is shaken. Come on. It's, it's, it's not just one city. It's not just one country. It's not just one continent. It's a worldwide pandemic. It's a crisis. And the world is looking for hope. And now is a perfect time for the church can I, can I encourage you a little bit? If you're watching right there in the living room, now is the perfect time of the church to be salt of their. Now is not the time for the church to be quiet. Now is the time the church to let our light shine and to be salt of the earth. People are shaken. People are unsure of their future. People are looking for hope. But how many know our God is not shaken? I said, how many know our God is not shaken? God has a future for us, and God is the hope to the hopeless. So this morning, as I get ready to come in for a landing, I want to encourage you to be the salt 
of the earth. In these trying times, that's right, the salt of the earth, salt makes you thirsty. Salt adds flavor, and salt is a preservative. Listen to me. There's some of you, maybe you're the only one saved in your family. And there's maybe some of you young people that are watching, and maybe you're the only one saved in your family. Don't stop praying for your mom. Don't stop praying for your dad because your prayer may be preserving your family. One day they're going to come into the house of the Lord. So don't get discouraged now. Now is the perfect time to keep praying for your loved ones. And mom, dad, maybe you've been praying for your son or your daughter. As the salt of the earth, we are a preservative. Your prayers is making a difference. Keep praying for your son. Keep praying for your daughter. Because who knows, they may be one prayer away from coming into the house of the Lord. And in this time, I just wanted to share this message with the church that now is a perfect time for us to let our light shine and to be the salt of the earth. As Christians, you and I should allow our lives to bring hope to the hopeless. The world is crying out. The world's crying out. And we are called to be the salt of the earth. And I want to say a prayer. Maybe you're watching right now. I want to talk to the church a little bit. Maybe you're watching and you say, you know what, Pastor Dre, I want to continue to stand in the gap for my family. Maybe you've been getting a little bit discouraged. Don't give up now. I want to say a prayer for you. Or maybe you say, man, I got to step it up, being a better example in my love to my family or in my love to my friends. Or I need to step it up in my testimony. I don't know what it may be, but you say, man, I, I need to step it up in being an example for the Lord. I want my life to make others thirsty for the gospel. Or maybe you're being challenged. You say, man, what a perfect opportunity for me to add flavor in the situation at my job. Maybe to add flavor. Maybe you work at the mall or you work at a school or wherever you work. You say, man, everybody's stressed out. What an opportunity for you to add flavor. And it might be at your own household. What an opportunity. So if you're listening, I want to say a word of prayer for you. And in this time that you and I could take the challenge to be the salt of the earth. And like I said at the beginning, it's not just for the preacher. It's not just for the leaders in the church. When Jesus spoke in Afrikaans, it was, Yalla is the salt van die aarde. That means everybody. Yeah, you. You watching right there? God wants to use you to be salt of the earth. So I want you to stand right there where you're at. I know you're in your house. I know, I know. But I still want you to stand. Maybe you're in your living room. If you're driving and you're listening, okay, just continue to drive. But wherever you're at right now, I want to say a word of prayer. And hear my heart. Hear me out. The world is in a crisis. And this is a perfect opportunity for you and I to be the salt of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy upon every one of our lives, God. And I pray for the one that's watching right now, God. I pray that you would encourage them to keep praying for their family, God. Maybe they've been a little bit discouraged during this time. Maybe they felt like giving up because their family's not coming into the house of the Lord. But I pray that they would continue to be that preservative and lift their family up to you, God. I pray for that mommy that's praying for her son or her daughter. Continue to strengthen her. Just right there where you are. I want you to stretch your hands. I want to pray for you. That's right. I pray for that mommy, God. I pray that you would strengthen her. That you would strengthen her as she prays for her son. She prays for her daughter. That she would not give up, but that you would use her as a preservative for her family. And I pray for that teenager, God, that's praying for their family member. Maybe they don't see a change. Maybe it seems like things are getting worse. Come on, lift your hands right there. Young person, lift your hands. I pray for that young person, God, that you would help them to continue to pray for their family. To continue to be that preservative for your honor and for your glory. And God, I pray for those of us that want to let our light shine. Maybe we can step it up with our testimony and add flavor at our jobs, add flavor at our school. God, I pray you would help us to be that testimony where our lives would make people thirsty for your gospel. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what a power-packed service. Pastor Dre really ministered to us in a special way this morning. And now we want to give you an opportunity to partner with us in your giving. Remember, Victor Outreach Cape Town, we're still in our shift challenge. We're not going to allow the situation around us dictate our faith. And so what we put together is a tutorial to teach each and every one of us how to continue to stay faithful with our finances by giving online. So put your attention to this tutorial. Hope that you had a great, great service, and we will see you again next week. God bless you. 
to make a payment via online giving, you need to firstly contact your local bank to activate your bank card for online payments. Go to Victory Outreach Cape Town website via capetown.net and choose the giving option. Scroll down and choose your giving option. If you are giving from South Africa, click the red pay fast tab on the left. Choose your giving type, put in your amount which will reflect in RAND. Enter your full name, email and phone number. Click on the Give Now tab. Regardless of your card type, click on the first tab option, Credit and Check Card. Fill in your email address and bank card details and click Pay. You will receive an email notification showing that your payments has been made successfully. Thank you for continuing to partner with us through your giving and may God continually bless you.